Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial. In this video, we learn one very very important theorem in abstract algebra, which is known as first silo theorem. Already in our channel, we did two videos on second silo theorem and third silo theorem already is there, are there. Now we are going to prove the first silo theorem. Let us see the statement of first silo theorem. Let capital G be a finite group and let P be a prime number. If P power M divides order of G, then G has a subgroup of order P power M. So we prove this theorem in detail. Let us see. Let capital G be a finite group. Capital G be a finite group. It means it consists only finite number of elements. And P be a prime number. P be a prime number. Suppose. Suppose. P divides. Mar G. Mar G means. P divides. Order of G. P divides order of G. Now we have to prove that. We have to prove that G has a subgroup. G has a subgroup of order P power M. G has a subgroup of order P power M. Where P is a prime number and M is a positive integer. To prove this, let us take order of G, which is also represented by mod G. Mod G is equals to n we use mathematical induction to prove this theorem we use mathematical induction to prove this theorem let us see if n is equals to 1 if n is equals to 1 the result is obvious very trivial is absolutely true there is nothing to prove if n is 1, there is nothing to prove. So obviously it is true. So there is nothing to prove if n is equals to 1. So right, if n is equals to 2, suppose, if n is equals to 2. If n is equals to 2, what it means? The group G contains two elements. Then the group G contains two elements. One is identity element. The second one is other elements. Let it be small a. The, G, the group, if n is equals to 2, then the group contains only two elements. One is identity, where e is identity element and a is other element. a is other element. Here, here, 2 is only prime, 2 is only prime, such that 2 divides order of g. 2 divides order of g. So, trivially, trivially, g is a subgroup, g is a subgroup of capital G, which is of order 2, which is of order 2. I think you understand. 2 is the only prime number because there is only 2 elements. So, 2 is the only prime number such that 2 divides order of G. Trivially, G is the G is a subgroup of G which is of order 2. Hence, again, this completes the proof of our theorem here in this case if n is equals to 2. So, our result is true. Our theorem is true. Now, let us assume that. Let us assume that. The theorem is true. Let us assume that the theorem is true for all finite groups, for all groups or finite groups of order less than Marchi. That is of order less than n. We assume that the theorem is true. I mean first silo theorem is true for all groups whose order is less than small n. Now, we prove our theorem. We know that, we know that, 
there are simple facts z of g is center of the group g we know that z of g is center of the group g because g is finite z of g is also a finite z of g is also a finite abelian group or subgroup of g we know that z of g is a center of the group g every center of the group is fine every center of the group is abelian here the group g is abel g is finite so z of g is also a finite abelian group finite abelian group now we assume one condition suppose p divides order of z of g p divides order of z of g p divides order of z of g and z of g is a finite abelian group then by cauchy theorem for abelian groups then by cauchy theorem for abelian groups there exists an element there exists an element small a in z of g which also belongs to in g z of g is subset to g z of g is subset to g in g satisfying the condition a power p is equals to e this is important point to remember by using cauchy theorem for abelian groups suppose p divides order of z of g then by cauchy theorem for abelian groups there must be an element a in z of g as well as in g because z of g is subset to g satisfying the condition a power p is equals to e a power p is equals to e right now let capital c be a cyclic group capital c be a cyclic group in g generated by generated by small a which belongs to g small a which belongs to g obviously obviously every cyclic group is normal so c is normal subgroup c is normal subgroup of capital c now consider the quotient group now consider the quotient group g by c now consider the quotient group g by c mod g by c is equals to mod g by mod c which is less than mod g obviously mod less than mod g also we know that p power m divides mod g and mod c is equals to p why because mod c is equals to p c is a cyclic group generated by the element a it means c is generated by a what is the order of a here p what is the order of a p so the order of the generator is equal to order of the group it means order of c also p so mod c is equals to p p power m divides mod g and mod c is equals to p this condition shows us p power m minus 1 divides mod g by c p power m minus 1 divides mod g by c so right now you observe the already we are, our assumption what is our assumption the theorem is true the first silo theorem is true for all groups who whose order is less than n whose order is less than n here mod g by c is a group of order less than g it means less than n and also p power m minus 1 divides mod g by c this shows us g by c contains this shows us g by c contains a subgroup g by c contains a subgroup h by c h by c of order of order p power m minus 1 and which is also subgroup of g which is also subgroup of g hence the theorem is complete in this case the theorem is complete in this case in case of mod g by c so suppose what is this case we are assuming that p divides p divides order of z of g so whenever p divides order of z of g our theorem is complete now we are going to assume that suppose 
सपोज P does not divides order of z of g. P does not divides order of z of g. In the previous part, we show that P divides order of z of g. We prove the our theorem. Now we are assuming that P does not divides order of z of g. Right. The class equation of g is the class equation of the group g is. mod g is equals to mod z of g plus summation over a order of g over n of a here the summation runs over the summation runs over one element one element from each conjugate class each conjugate class having more than one element having more than one element important point i can explain even class g sets also here summation runs over one element from each conjugate class having more than one element and what is n of a n of a is normalizer of a n of a is normalizer of capital normalizer of the element small a now we have now we have p power m divides p power m divides mod g and p what it means p divides mod n but p does not divides order of z of g order of z of g this condition implies as p does not divides order of g over n of a order of g over n of a but but by class equation we have order of g over n of a order of g over n of a is nothing but mod g by mod n of a mod g by mod n of a now since now since p power m divides mod g and p power m does not divides order of g over n of a implies as p power m divides because this condition p power m divides mod n of a order of n of a so p power m divides order of n of a means and clearly order of n of a is less than order of g order of n of a less than order of n of g such that this n of a is also a subgroup of g by induction hypothesis by induction mathematical induction we conclude that n of a has a subgroup n of a has a subgroup of order p power m of order p power m which is the same subgroup which is the subgroup of g which is the subgroup of capital g of order p power m of order p power m hence in this case also whenever whenever p does not divides order of z of g then there must be a subgroup in n of a whose order is p power m which is also a subgroup of g with order p power m hence we conclude that hence we conclude that if p power m divides mod g and g is a finite group then g has a subgroup g has a subgroup of order p power m of order p power m this completes the proof hence proved observe that so important theorem to learn for examinations keep learning wish you all the best